Greetings. Greetings and welcome to Storytime with Dr. Helen Tinsley. I'm happy to be here with you again today. And we're going to continue reading stories from the anthology, The People Could Fly. So let's begin. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. In the stories that I read every day. Welcome, 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 welcome to Storytime with Dr. Helen Tinsley. And we are continuing our journey through the book, The People Could Fly, an American Black Folk Tale. And the story for today is Wolf and Birds and the Fish House. The fi I'm sorry, Wolf and Birds and the Fish Horse. Think a sea wave left this tale on the doorstep. This about one wolf and his nephew. They were having his dance out there across the water. And this nephew wanted to fool Wolf. So he told Wolf it was going to be a feast and not a dance. Wolf found the birds, asked them to lend him feathers so he could go fly across the feast. To the feast. The birds did give him feathers. Wolf went on out there and the dance started up. Wolf was angry when he saw there was a dance and not a feast. Wolf asked his nephew for something to eat. Nephew said, no, there's nothing to eat. This is no feast, it's a dance. The first one to get up and dance was Black Crow. Wolf says, "All oh, gets awfully loud. Says, Black Crow, you think you somebody? If you didn't always dig up folks' corn, you'd be fine. Crow took back the feather he given the wolf. The next one to dance was Ugly Vulture. Wolf had to go say, Vulture, you think you somebody? If you wasn't always looking for dead goats and donkeys to eat, you might be just fine. That made Vulture take back his feather too. Here comes to dance Old Blue Jay. Wolf started. Says, Blue Jay, you think you somebody? Good thing you don't see that red mouth of yours. Without it, you be fine. Blue Jay went ahead and took back his feather. Dancing, by came the hawk. Old Wolf had to say, Oh, hawk, you think you somebody. If you weren't always hunting people's chickens, you'd be just fine. Hawk snatched back his feather off of Wolf. Just then Guinea Hen came by Guinea Hen came by dancing. Wolf says, Guinea Hen, you sure think you somebody. But you don't see your own skinny head? If it was bigger, you'd be just fine. Guinea Hen took back her feather. When the dance was over, everybody left. Wolf was all alone out there. All alone and awful hungry. No food. Wolf started up crying. Then comes swimming by who they call Aunt Fish Horse. See, Wolf is out there near the water. Can't get home across it. She says to Wolf, what is wrong with you? Are you sick? Wolf says back, the birds loan me feathers. I fly to the dance and after a while they take their feathers back. Then they left me all by myself out here. Wolf says, Aunt Fish Horse, if you take me to my own place, I'll pay you for it. Well, jump on my back, she tells him. And so that's what Wolf did. She took him onto his place by way of the water. Halfway there, Wolf notices that Aunt Fish Horse has milk. He will take her milk from her as soon as they reach shore. And he does. At the beach, he pulls out the milk. He left Aunt Fish Horse crying on the beach. Then came Nephew passing by. Why are you crying like that, he asked Aunt Fish Horse. She tells him, Wolf did it. Wolf tore out my milk. If you pay me, I'll put Wolf back into your hands, said Nephew. If you can do that, says Aunt Fish Horse, I'll give you whatever you want. So Nephew headed for home. Halfway there, he starts to hollering. Get my knife and my bowl, wife, wife. 
There's a fish who was lying on the beach waiting for me to kill it. Wolf heard the hollering. It's mine, he called to the nephew. I left on fish who was lying there to get my own knife and bowl. Don't you touch her. She's mine. Wolf hurries down to the beach with his knife and bowl and his wife too. He grabs on fish who was to kill her, but she grabbed him back got him by the leg and pulled him into the sea with her. Wolf's wife is crying at the sight. Don't cry, Wolf tells her. Aunt Fish Horse is just playing. Aunt Fish Horse dives to the bottom, stays a minute. When Wolf is up again, his wife is still crying. Don't cry like that while I'm still breathing, Wolf tells his wife. Aunt Fish Horse dives again, stays down a long time. She comes up. Wolf is choking. His wife is crying still. Better head cry now, Wolf chokes and sputters to his wife, for, for, for Fish Horse is killing me. Aunt Fish Horse dived to the bottom with Wolf. Wolf came up two days later. He was full of little fish and sand and water. Nephew caught the little fish. They had a funeral for Wolf. I saw it go by. All his children cried for him, and all his people did too. And that's the story of Wolf and birds and the fish horse. Now, a little backdrop about that story. This is a version of a black folk tale of African origin, one of hundreds of such tales first told in a Portuguese Mandingo dialect. These tales were brought to the Northwestern United States from the Cape Verde Islands by black Portuguese immigrants. The Cape Verde Island group was formerly a group, a colony of Portugal and is now a Portuguese overseas province that lies some 600 miles off the African, the West African coast. The immigrants from the Cape Verde Islands are descended from African slaves imported by the early Portuguese to work their plantations from Europeans, the Portuguese, and from most of the principal types associated with the African continent, including Arab and Hamitic. They are also descended from enslaved Africans who were gathered on the islands to be shipped across the Atlantic. But the enslaved Africans were left there when the slave trade ended. The slave trade to the United States ended almost completely in 1864. It ended officially in 1870. Slavery ended in the Cape Verde Islands in 1876. Similar tales told by the Cape Verde immigrants about birds taking back their feathers are found in Africa, in Jamaica, and among Amer Indians. The tale, Wolf and Birds and the Fish House, is taken from the wolf and nephew cycle of tales, similar in intent to the monkey and rabbit cycle tales found in the Bahamas. And that is the story of Wolf and Birds and the Fish Horse. You know, it's amazing in spite of uh, what African people, my ancestors, our ancestors went through in their, their enslavement for centuries, for hundreds of years, they were able to keep alive tales of courage, of cunning, of cleverness, of wittiness, of what happens when you betray someone, of betrayal, of um, jealousy, of envy, of of, of all types of emotional uh, aspects, but more importantly, they were lessons. And although the tales morphed and morphed rather over the years, um, the gist of them remain. And fortunately, we still have collections and anthologies that uh, document them and storytellers story that tell them. So with that said, I wish you all a wonderful day. Hi, Carlton, and hi to whoever else may be watching. I hope you enjoyed this story. It's a beautiful Saturday. Enjoy your day, and I will see you tomorrow, same time, same place. Peace. Be well.